What happens when you let this experience be exactly as it is, you don't try and change it, and you just stop trying to control it? You know those feelings that you don't like that you're always trying to avoid because they're uncomfortable? What happens when you just allow them to come up? What happens when you just allow yourself to see them and to feel them and then allow them to pass? What happens when you just allow your thoughts to exist, to just arise, exist, and pass? You don't have to remove them. You don't have to make them more positive. You don't have to criticize your thinking. You just allow them to be exactly as they are without getting so involved in them, without needing to change them, without needing to control them. What if you do that with that problem in your life, right? That you're so obsessed about. You just can't let go of trying to solve this problem in your life to the point where you just can't relax. What happens if you just let go of that? And just for now, just for a few moments, you just learn to step back and just allow it to exist rather than reacting to it. You're just not trying to control it so much just watching, just allowing experience to be exactly as it is, just for now. Could that potentially help you to solve the problem by taking a step back? Can this potentially change the way that you are relating to your problems, relating to situations? Can this potentially give you the, the inner psychological space that's needed to be more effective in your relationship to yourself, to other people, to your career, to the problems that exist in your life? What happens if you let go of needing to save the world, let go of needing to improve yourself? You just, once again, you're just letting all this go. You're letting experience be as it is just for now, just for now. You're just not controlling it. Just try it out only for a little bit, not forever, just for now, just for this video. <laughs> if you really don't want to do it, you can click off the video or you can pick it all back up the second the video ends. What happens when you just really allow yourself to just exist in this space? You don't have to control it. You don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to improve yourself, nothing. Just allowing it to exist, allowing sensations to move, allowing what wants to come out to come out, allowing thoughts to arise, allowing yourself to just fully exist without needing to push down on yourself. Again, you're just not controlling it. You're allowing yourself to fully be here, fully inhabiting this space. Essentially, something really profound happens the second that you just let go of needing to alter experience whatsoever. This becomes a major shift. This is a huge turning point that can really impact every single domain of your life. Can you see how this can really impact every domain of your life whenever you have some kind of problem? Whether it's a more logical one or emotional one, you can kind of like not be so reactive. Let's say you have a relationship problem. Again, you can just not be so reactive. You don't have to control it and fix it immediately. It's like you're able to kind of just meet life with this deeper tranquility. Not meaning that you always feel relaxed, but more so regardless of what's happening, regardless of what the flow of life brings you, you're able to just meet it with more acceptance, more psychological space, more awareness, less of a need to control it immediately. Very counterintuitively, this makes you far more effective at actually solving the problems that you face far more effective in your relationships, far more effective in relating to yourself in a more healthy way. So once you're able to kind of just let go and allow this experience to be as it is, you let go of controlling it, let go of pushing a feeling away, let go of needing a particular thought to be removed. The energy starts to flow, which is what you really want. You want to feel connected to life. You want to feel some sense of energy flow. That's why you want to make money. That's why you want to have sex. That's why you want to eat food. Essentially, you're trying to connect yourself to a flow of energy. Those are some reasons, not all the reasons, just some. Right? You're trying to just feel connected to the moment. 
There's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. It's all perfectly fine. It's just that it often becomes very compulsive within human beings and very unconscious. So essentially, the second you're able to just not have to control everything, you stop getting your hands in there and it's like, ew, you're, it's like sick and twisted actually. <laughs> the second you can just really let it, everything be as it is, the energy moves. A lot of blocks are gone. <laughs> they naturally start to liberate themselves. A lot of emotional problems can naturally start to just liberate themselves. You start to just feel more connected to experience. You actually start to feel more authentic. It's like the universe has an opportunity to move through you as you, rather than you always blocking it out in favor of controlling every little thing. Sometimes the best way to gain more control is by letting it go. Life is often very counterintuitive. So a lot of feelings start to liberate themselves. Thoughts can kind of come and go more freely. You're not always just reacting to the inner world. You feel more connected to other people. What happens when you let go of always trying to control other people? You let go of trying to just control their beliefs all the time. You let go of trying to control their opinion of you to get approval. You just decide to just let that entire game go just for a little bit. Just see what happens. Take it on as, an, as a science experiment. So counterintuitively, you can actually feel more connected to others. You bring less reactivity to your relationships. You feel more present. You feel more grounded <laughs> as a human being. And you can begin to recognize that a lot of the things that you actually thought you were, like these thoughts, these feelings, <laughs> the body... It's not you. It's just you're this awareness that just watches it all. And the second you can just abide as that, right? All the energy in the mo in the in the moment can flow freely and counterintuitively <laughs> your awareness gets embodied deeper into the world of form. So in Buddhism they make this distinction between the formless consciousness, emptiness and the world of form neither of which are separate from each other. And really just by learning to observe, right, take a step back and just observe the world of form, thoughts, emotions, feelings, people, sensations, situations, right, you stop reacting to it, your ability to connect with it actually deepens. Your ability to fully inhabit your experience deepens. Your authenticity increases. So essentially you start to deconstruct the ego, the false sense of self. Essentially, you are this formless awareness that's just observing the dance of form. And awareness is ultimately inseparable from the world of form. <laughs> so we're kind of making this distinction between consciousness, empty consciousness, and the world of form. But then we're also breaking this distinction down. So pure, empty, formless awareness is the very source of your existence, which is something that you can become conscious of for yourself. You don't have to believe me. I don't care whether or not you believe me. In fact, you believing me does no good for you, really. Well, maybe you got to have a little bit of faith in order to test it for yourself. But aside from that, you taking this on as your next religion, your next dogma, whatever it is, this doesn't actually do anything for you. <laughs> this is something that you can become conscious of for yourself if you want to. And you can actually recognize that <laughs> Everything is arising from consciousness. Everything's arising and passing away back into this one awareness, this one consciousness. Thought arises from consciousness, exists within consciousness, passes away back into empty consciousness. And it's doing that moment by moment by moment. Everything is always in this constant state of flux, change, flow, arising and passing. Right? This is impermanence. Impermanence doesn't just mean that, um, you know, like your relationship will eventually have to end or your job will eventually have to end. It, it means something far deeper than that, although, yes, it does mean that too. 
Impermanence means that every single aspect of existence is not staying the same even for a moment. Everything is in this constant state of flux, flow, change, and ultimately uncertainty. Just chaos. And the more you can surrender to the chaos, like O of Control, counterintuitively, the more in harmony you feel. The most order you... <laughs> it'll be the most order you've ever felt in your entire life because this flow of, of chaos, <laughs> this world of form, right? It's intelligent. It's not stupid. It's not <laughs> uh, <laughs> unconscious. This world itself is conscious. This world itself is alive and intelligent. This world itself is aware. Awareness is a quality of existence itself, not a human. The human doesn't generate awareness. <laughs> the human is happening within awareness, within consciousness. Again, it's something that you can become conscious of for yourself. And this awareness is completely non-objective. Let me tell you a little bit of what I mean by that. So it's, it's, it's really the ultimate subject of experience. You can't objectify this awareness in the same way that you can objectify um, my hand or an atom or any of that kind of stuff. It's the ultimate subject. It's your nature, which is inseparable from everything. Essentially, it collapses the very duality between subject and object, subjective and, and objective. It moves even beyond that. It transcends the very duality of subject and object while including them. So it's this transcend and include, <laughs> not this transcend and then like repress and push it away. So it's you. It's what you are. It's what these trees are. It's what I am. It's what the leaves on the ground are, the dirt. It's what your mom is. It's what your dad is. It's what your dog is. It's what your teacher is. It's what that person you hate. It's what they are. It's all coming from this inseparable source of just pure empty consciousness. Again, I really want to remind you that this isn't some dogma. This really isn't just some new ideology for you to follow. <laughs> for the love of God, don't turn it into that. It's something that you can become conscious of for yourself. And really the foundation of the religious traditions like Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Judaism, they're founded upon mystics who directly realize this for themselves, like the Buddha. I mean, in Buddhism, it's very clear. No self, non-duality, emptiness. Jesus, there's a famous quote, the Father and I are one. Right? There's a lot of very good quotes by, quotes by all sorts of um, Christian mystics. And there's also, of course, esoteric Christianity. Um, what is it? The cloud of unknowing. <laughs> That's a particularly good one. Of course, in Judaism, the Kabbalah. Hinduism, Advaita Vedanta, essentially they're all built upon this direct realization. And because it's actually very advanced, um, people's minds can't really wrap around it. They don't really care too much about discovering the nature of their own existence. And so it just kind of gets turned into a dogma. They misunderstand it, they turn it into a dogma. And then thousands of years later, we kind of have this um, modern day delusion. That's it for this video. If you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching, you can apply to work with me one-to-one. -one. Take it easy.